welcome. How is everyone doing? Where is everybody tuning in from today? Hello, Simple Sam. Hello, Tiny Bites. Hello, Bugman. Who else we got? Let's have a look. Hello, Let Music Your Life. Hello to people on Twitch and Facebook. Matt Renzetti and Nikanta. Nice to have people here. Um, a couple of things to address before we get rolling. Uh, the first one is I've got a bad case of the man flu. So uh, apologies with the... Um, with the I might not even sound that bad, but my, th my voice is just a little bit groggy. Uh, number two, uh, last week I think was when we had a, a technical error and uh, the, basically the stream ended about 10 minutes early. But um, I did uh, follow up on ADSR's Discord chat and answer some questions the next day. So um, if anyone ever has any questions, you should go and join that Discord chat. And um, I'm always sort of checking it. So uh, if you if you have any questions related to sound design or anything really, uh, you sh uh, go and join the chat. And it's a good way to keep in contact and have a sense of community outside of these streams. Hello, oh, Toronto, Canada, nice. Ohio, Germany, Minnesota, nice. Very, very cool. Um, and then the final thing to address is um, I have a new uh, live streaming setup here, basically. I've got one of these new M1 MacBooks, which is really great, but I'm sort of working out the kinks. I got it as a portable solution, but it also works better for uh, for um, live streaming. So the only thing is the uh, the screen might look a little stretched might have to get that sorted for next week but i think everyone should be able to hear things loud and clear um let's just do a quick one too there's a little bit of pigments and there's a taster of quanta uh so hopefully everyone's hearing that loud and clear um yeah so this week is all about granular um so let us know if you've had any experience with granular like you might be a, an absolute pro and just know everything there is about granular or you might be an absolute novice there's room here for everyone uh so basically thank you kyle gray that's great um so uh paris oh lovely um so today today's stream welcome and introduction to today's stream basically we're going to look at what is granular and what makes up granular synthesis in terms of basically the grains um, and then we're going to look at how we can use granular synthesizers and we're going to basically look today at arteria pigments and output portal and i have one other solution i did find a freeware plugin called ribs but um i couldn't get it to install on this machine but i so check that out but otherwise, I have Quanta here from Audio Thing, which is probably the cheapest solution out of the three, which is all awesome, uh, uh, which is also really, really good. Um, so, uh, let me have a look. So, yeah, pigments, and then we're going to be looking at um, Portal from Output, which is a really, really cool tool. And we're also going to be looking at uh, Quanta, yeah, from Audio Damage. And we're going to explore using different samples within each and just how we can basically um, have a different approach to working with um, mainly samples. You can use um, like wave shapes with granular, but mainly samples today. Um, people are saying that they have a bit of granular experience in pigments. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, I've never um, ribs only works on barbecue. I haven't used um, granulator, but I've heard good things about that. I think that might be Ableton's solution. Um, one, two people saying that the audio's panned, which is strange. Uh, so apologies about that. But like I said, it's a bit of a work in progress this week. The stream's uh, a new setup. Hopefully, you guys can get away with it. But anyway, uh, let's get into it then. So. Um, we'll start off with what is granular synthesis. So basically, um, what what we're looking at is uh, granular synthesis. Mainly, is it's a term, but really, it's just like an extension of um, sample-based synthesis or um, wavetable sort of synthesis. Because what you're doing is you are taking um, uh, you're taking a slice of audio and basically the uh, slices range between 1 to 100 milliseconds and each individual grain has its own envelope 
and basically that enables them to have nice uh, crossfades so you don't get any clicks and any pops um and pigments does a really good job of illustrating this uh, because uh, let me just load up a default patch so if i go into the sample based engine pigments in granular um da -da 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 -da. As you can see, we have different shapes here for the grain envelope shape. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I, I guess they do make sense, actually. The only one I don't quite understand is turkey. <laughs> but we can use these different envelope shapes um, to go between all of the individual grains. Um, so basically, you can adjust the number of grains, and each grain is uh, gets its own envelope, as I said. And you can slice between the audio at different rates, and you can also decide how the audio plays back. So you might drop a sample in, but it doesn't have to play back the same way. So it could play back in reverse, or uh, there's a couple of different modes. Pigments is a really powerful tool for it, and also um, output is as well. So uh, we've got a, co a couple of different solutions today. I'm not sure how familiar people are with Paul. A really, really cool tool. Um, I'm just using the ADSR sample manager here to host uh, my samples. And then, like I said, lastly, we have Quanta. And I think Quanta is a good one for learning as well. Um, all It's definitely the cheaper solution. Um, Audio Thing does some really good stuff, but it's got some uh, factory presets, and it's a sort of good way to learn how uh, these sounds are processed. Um, Undeniably, I'd probably say pigments is the best, but let's have a look then. So, like I said, basically we have um, this, the sample-based engine here, and then underneath the sample-based engine we have the granular portion, which is where we're going to be focusing most of our attention today. So I'm going to load in a couple more imaginative samples. Let's have a look through um, the samples that I've got today. Um, I have some cool. Given to my Crikey, that was loud. Um, I have a couple of. Uh, that's better. A couple of vocal samples, which I thought would be really good for this. Uh, Left a crater bottom Given to my So, when you're working with the. Um, when you're working with pigment sampler, it's really easy. What, what I'll do is I'll drag this into here first. And uh, it's made the track incredibly small. Uh, two seconds. And then basically all you have to do from here is just drag drag this into uh, pigments. It's just drag and drop. So uh, like this. Oh, I'm not on the correct selection tool. There we go. And ironically, it's not wanting to do it. What I can do is I can load in. You can load in your own samples, though. Um, if I go to uh, my ADSR folder and my samples, I can choose them all from here. So you can drag them in. I'm not sure why it's not playing ball there. But anyway, we can we can access them all from here. So one thing I would say is you should um, capture your own samples or, you know, you can grab them from somewhere else and totally flip them on the head and give them some new sounds. Um, there were some really, really good, uh, there were some really good vocal ones. Um, but let's just check some of these out for now. So without turning on the... Uh, Without turning on the granular engine, let's, let's hear what we have with the original sample. So you can see the sample tracking. Sorry, so just someone asking what pigments is. Pigments is um, sort of like Serum's wavetable um, synthesizer, but it's Arturia's version, and it's a little bit more powerful, has a, a new harmonic engine which is additive synthesis, but if you have any more questions, I'll, uh, I'll come back and, um, I'll come back and answer questions for the last sort of 10 minutes. So feel free to drop anything in the comments that you'd like to, like me to answer towards the end. So yeah, here's our sample. 
and the granular engine won't work on pigments unless you actually turn it on and straight away it's programmed to um, a number of set values let's have a listen so already you get a totally different way of playing an existing piece of music which is really interesting uh, like I said these grain envelope shapes are basically all of the micro grains that it's going between it's an envelope to help um, the attack decay essentially um, go between all of the samples and some of them are basically more aggressive so like the turkey one is a lot more aggressive because it's got a um, tighter slope hasn't it at the start and the end like the ch this change in the sound is quite drastic when you change the actual um, when you change the actual uh, envelope shape and because this one has a sort of ripple effect you hear more of those clicks and pops but that could be an effect that you want we get a fade in with this one and the opposite with the Expo deck and the smooth one. And we can shape them more there as well, which is really cool. So, what else can we do? So we can select the uh, sample and grain start region. So basically what this control here will do is it will uh, tell the granular engine whereabouts you want it to start from. So I could change the start time. And a really cool thing to do, which I'm going to show you when we're just fleshing out something, is how you can go, how you can automate that start region to create some really, really, really cool effects uh, within your pieces. Sort of very future basey, uh, if if you know what I mean. And then down here in the granular, we have the size and time control. So this is going to depict the actual length that the grains are going to play for. So we get much tighter there. And then we have our density control. Another one that's really cool is how you can change the way that um, things actually play. So um, the cool thing about granular is it doesn't have to play the way the original sample was intended. We could play this backwards or we could play it halfway between forwards and backwards. Let's have a look at changing the uh, envelope and you can also modulate these parameters as well which is really cool and already that sounds wildly different from what it was so what I would think would be cool is to skip through the um, regions there with the sample grain start control you could do this in two ways you could basically automate it um, or you could um, modulate that sample grain control using one of pigments built-in uh, controls which is really cool um, so let me show you how you could do that so I would probably use one of the function controls and uh, you could maybe set it or you could use one of the randomizers so the randomizers are sort of like a more unpredictable version, as you can see by the step pattern here, of the functions. So it just mixes things up a little bit. So what we could do is we could apply a randomizer at the sample uh, grain star control. And you see it's jumping all over the shop now, which is awesome. Um, and that will give us um, a different, you see the sample uh, playhead moving around there quite a lot. Let's have a listen to that now. So I don't like the grins from that. Uh, 
and then what we could do is we can just go into effects and start adding some stuff to make it sound cool and I'm just holding one key down before so don't forget you can play it indifferently as well So let's have a look at some other samples and again it's just great to see how the sound can transform. We'll probably spend about the next uh, 15 to 20 on pigments and then we'll uh, dive into uh, Portal which is a really really cool one as well. Let's have a look what we have here. Piano. Okay, let's turn the granular engine up. And pitch it up the octave. And let's change the rate of the sample grain start, which has been modulated by the randomizer here. That's cool. So if any of you have listened to um stuff like Rufus de Sol and Flume, they do this a ton in their music. It just seems to be a thing that's really trendy at the minute. And it's a good way of making things sound a little bit more organic and, and, uh, and just a little bit more real, actually, which is a funny thing because it's obviously still a synthetic concept. Let's have a look. And don't forget, I was talking about this last week. Pigments comes with loads and loads of things interesting enough let's see what they put in their granular friendly so sort of drones are always a good starting point there's a kalimba sample but it's been processed with the granular um preset that i dialed in before and the randomizer modulating the start of the sample grain That's really cool. So the way that it's moving around the sample there really makes a world of a difference. Let's hear this without the granular. So I definitely think that vocals definitely is probably one of the um is probably one of the best things to use granular for because it can help you with making vocal chops that are just new. Um let me just turn these off as per requested. And obviously every time you re-trigger the MIDI from my keyboard controller, you get a new set of um, playback regions. So you could hypothetically drop a sample in here that is really, really long. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up another instance of pigments. And I'm just going to record a part down. Um, duplicate the track. For anyone who is wondering, Pigments has this really, really nice patch uh, called Emotional Piano. Yeah, this one. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll find a sample or something that is in uh, the key and then I'll play to it. Um, let's have a look at these. I don't know if these have a specific key in mind. Let's try putting down a quick chord progression. I've got the metronome there. do something like that excellent and let's just quantize that and we're going to use that as a foundation for uh, for our 
chord progression, like the backbone. Da, 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 da. Let's hear this. Just loop that section. So that was in C minor. Let's have a look through the samples. See if I have anything which is in the key. If not, I can tune them. Mostly G's and C's. So there's a C minor one. Let's have a listen to what this is like. Without the granny around for now. This one's a B minor vocal phrase. So I'm just trying to get the key of this currently. Okay, that's almost in C minor. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the granular portion for this vocal sample. I'm just going to get rid of the modulator here, which is the randomizer. So it's just a taste thing, but I'm just going through the um, sample here to find a part which I like in terms of the grains. But like, you could always automate that later on as well in your composition. back on. Use randomizer 3 for a little bit. So I don't want to use this other half of the sample because it seems to go into a, a different uh, harmony. Okay, let's put a little bit of breathing on this. Okay, let's have a listen. And now what I'm going to do is go back and change the shape of the granular envelope. Got to be careful with the pitch control. I'm going to reduce the amount of the grain. Cool, that's starting to sound like something you work with. You just got to take a little bit of time to um, dive in and sort of figure it out. I feel like I say this every week, but yeah, so it's all it's all um, a taste thing, subjective. So 
what you like someone else might not like and vice versa you might think something sounds garbage that someone really likes so just go with your gut and see if it works but let's just sort of let's track this part I'm just gonna get rid of the the loop region there I'm just gonna turn that metronome down because it is crazy loud Okay. Cool. That really reminds me of uh, the song Rushing Back. If anyone knows that song. From, I think it's by Flume. Um, it's just sort of a similar way as to how he processes vocals using... Um, the on the uh, vocals of his, of his vocal chops. just side chain this to pigments 2 Just ducks it out of the way a little bit, which is cool. So, yeah, the pigments is a, a very um, extensive tool in terms of its capabilities. I know some people, um, some people are saying that they hadn't actually. I was surprised some people weren't familiar with it, but yeah, it's a very, very, very powerful synth um, in terms of its uh, granular capabilities, its sample capabilities, you know, dual filter and stuff. We've looked at this over the past couple of weeks at least. The new harmonic engine enables additive synthesis, which is really cool. Um, and then what we could do as well is we could layer, along with the sample, something in the utility engine. Um, but yeah, let's just go over what we have one more time, and then we'll move on. Get this to keyboard track. And let's just look at where we started from, which was this, and I'll solo it. So we didn't use the back end half of the sample, we just used the start of it. And we went to this. Be really cool with a kick underneath it, wouldn't it? Um, so yeah, pigments, really, really cool. Uh, if there's any questions for it, I'll, uh, I'll check them in the last half. Uh, so, who has experience or who is uh, who knows about Portal? So, Portal is um, Portal is a output um, output product and output do some really really cool stuff. Um, let me have a look. Um, so. What I'm going to do is, with Portal, what's different is you, you don't play it as the way you do with um, Pigments because it is a um, it's an, an effects insert. You actually process material by putting it through it. So let's just, let's just put some samples onto the track here. 
we'll mute these two regions and let's just take one of these or something let me cool down like the weather October There we go. And I think I already have a preset dialed in, but Portal, Portal basically um, is a really lovely user interface in terms of it just makes it like nice to play, you know? You can actually have a lot of fun um, in terms of, um, well, you could automate the actual grain pad here, and it gives you the regions. So as you can see, the I'm not I'm not great at the old uh, school maths, but you've got your x and your y axis here, and you've got pitch here and tape delay here, and you can change these. Um, in the in the back end here, you've got lots of different things. We have our x y control, and this is where we basically have um the effects, and then the overall master as well. We've even got a um sort of SSL G bus style compressor. And then we have our first modulator, and we can load in more. And we have our second modulator again, so a little bit like pigments. Um, and we got stuff like time stretches and our grain controls here. It's actually very similar to pigments, just laid out in a different way. But this is more for processing audio rather than playing it back through. So let's uh, let's loop this. And another great thing about Portal is it comes with all of these great starting points in terms of um, the actual uh, so the type of instrument or the type of effect so as you as you can see we have like drums and vocals which would be a great starting point or you can actually say well I'm looking for something that I want to be sound design or something that's um, delay based so what we have here is vocals <laughs> And I think the titles give you a good idea as to what you can expect. So, for example, if we go back to the part here, you could automate this. And you have a dry wet mix blend. And again, in true granular nature, we have a reverse control for um, moving forward or moving backwards because, remember, granular is uh, not restricted to the playback head direction. So, let's have a look at what's going on here if we start adjusting um, some of the um, actual controls within Portal. So, the stretch knob here will control the speed at which the sample is played back. And then we have our grain controls as well. Let's just have a look at what these do. This is like a ratio control. And the red underneath here is illustrating that modulator 2 is the one that is modulating the density control. So a little bit like what I was doing in pigments. Um, and um, it's modulating the sample grain in pigments here the modulator 2 is modulating the density which is nice and you can control that here so they are specific to vocal effects let's have a look at some of the more um, heavy-handed stuff within glitchy so you can tell straight away this is probably some sort of bit crushing 
Then the effects. Yeah, a bit reducer. So you've also got um, a nice all-in-one solution here in terms of using your um, effects as well within the plugin. So a lot of modulations going on here. And what we'll do is we'll drop in some more samples. Um, let's have a look at, uh, I'm just going to pull down the overall value of this. It would be cool if I could get one um, which could make either a lead or a pad. Actually, I see someone's just said that, yeah, it'd be cool to make a pad with one of these as a base layer for the keys. Let's take this because it's quite obviously not a pad. It's cool. So let's take this. It's obviously not a pad. And let's see if we can turn this into something atmospheric as a background layer, which is something that, um, this is something that granular is really great for, is creating textures. So uh, let's have a look. Maybe within the uh, menu, we start here, exponential spaces. That's getting there. We need to slow down the rate on the second modulator. So that's sort of pad esque. Let's, uh, So what key was this in G minor? <clears throat> Just think of a chord progression and go over the top of this while searching for the sustain pedal. <clears throat> hydrate okay let's record that in <coughs> One of them was incredibly late. In fact, two of them. Okay, let's check this out then. <coughs> and that last one's still there. Okay. Cool. And let's go back into Portal and um, add some to the effects. So we couldn't have a delay and a reverb. And again, we've got some modulators here. 
and I think what we'll do is we'll put it at full uh, full wet blend uh, and just uh, remove that macro so we can just control it from the get-go and um, what other effects do we have the chorus could make it really cool and wide let's have a listen what that does So it's quite quite heavy handed. Uh, let's have a look through some of the stretch and smear patches as well while we're on. Uh, let's have a look. So uh, let's think about um, we've created an atmosphere. How can we create more of like a, a lead line? Maybe something rhythmic. So there we are, it's basically a lead. It's tightening up the sample by using this sort of inverted uh, square wave kind of, uh, which is given, uh, what's that, a quarter note? Yeah, quarter note rate. So it's going, d d d d d, which is a really nice effect actually. Um, That's really cool. So, Portal, a lot of fun. Let's uh, uh, let's add some more samples to um, Portal, and then we'll finish off with Quanta. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, actually, let's let's grab a vocal phrase now that we have um, now that we have uh, our minor G minor. I think that was in. Or let's just say, just do minor. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, it's creating on a very small track. So this one is currently in the key of G sharp minor. Um, I just need to slightly change the tuning of this. Um, I think we'll do that down here. Let's transpose it down one. Let's hear about what we have. So lead line and portal, which has created this sort of lead layer. I'm just going to drop this on here so this will duck behind emotional keys. Uh, let's have a listen. And let's put portal back onto the vocal line now. So we've had we've had the atmospheric um, texture, and we've had and the lead line that we create from that part. Let's see what we can do with portal on a vocal. So we've looked at what pigments can do with a vocal. What about what portal can do with a vocal? I actually think I might time stretch this and, and, and speed it up. I always think that um, if you're working with audio, something like portal is really, really good in terms of um, it'll process uh, like uh, material in a way you couldn't otherwise, even with like radically cool plugins you know like for example sound toys even if you use sound toys stuff you just wouldn't be able to get effects like this so you should have at least one granular uh, plugin in your arsenal I'd probably say pigments if I'm completely honest because it's a powerhouse in terms of a synth and it's always on good deals so for the price pigments is um, they're giving it away let's have a look at some of the vocal presets
Cool octave pitching down there within the gran within the granular. Bit too uh, crazy. Um, let's have a look at uh, some of the crystalline patch here within pitch. That's a really nice one. So what do we have going on here? Uh, within the effects tab, we have the bit reducer, which I'm gonna turn off. Filter will leave on. And then what it's doing is, it sounds like we have some pitch shifting effects going on. main tab here so you can pitch it up here it was currently pitched up one octave which has given us that shimmer um, um, but you can pitch it up one, two, three octaves to give us those upper uh, ranges with the sort of shimmer vocal. Really cool. Or you can pitch it down. So one octave down is really cool. Nice. Nice. So Portal, if you haven't already, check it out. Really, really nice tool. I think Granular, um, before we move on, is just a really great way to, um, you know, give you inspiration. Um, part of the reason I love, um, I, I love going out and capturing my own samples and stuff. But uh, part of the reason I like receiving, getting samples from other people is because they do stuff you would never do and granular is just like that like you would never process things in these ways until you hear it like this and then you think yeah that is really really great so it's a really good way to almost give you a set of inspiration okay lastly on the list i did say we'd look at quanta so quanta is from audio damage it's the cheapest one here there was a free one but i just didn't have much luck installing it sadly um but yeah quanta has some really great presets from some fantastic sound designers um, I know we have stuff like Richard Devine here, um, or Richard Devine, however you say it. Um, and uh, Quanta is, again, in essence, sort of similar, but you it's, again, a very good visual tool. So you can um, take control of, like, your envelopes here within this um, FEG and your LFO. And then you also have your mod matrix here. Too much to get into for an episode. I mean, this, all of these could... Uh, this, is probably m this has probably got more... Um, granular control this has got more granular control than pigments and um, portal but at the same time um, just having more is not always the best that's not knocking this at all but it's just sometimes limitations are a good thing but let's just uh, have a look through the presets and then I'll uh, I'll come and have a look at the comment section or anything for the last uh, for the last five quickly whiz through quanta some really really lovely presets here man um so richard divine is a sound designer who captures like a lot of well a, a huge range of things but you can tell some of these are field recordings <laughs> I'm pretty sure that some of these presets would be um, some of these presets will be um, I'm losing my words here. I, I think some of these presets will be resampled. Um, for example, I think they could maybe they've designed them in a synth and resampled and bounced them down. 
but again we can change the start region but we do have a modulator as you can see moving us through the sample just like I suggested using pigments so it's a very similar technique And again, this is just like pigments again. So we have our grains and then we have our envelope shape, which goes between the grains. We have our filters. And we can also mix in an oscillator as well. We have a noise layer. So it's a little bit like the utility engine in pigments. We can bring in the noise layer as well. Unison mode will apply 15, maximum 15 voices to, um, to Qantas. So quite impressive how powerful this one is actually. It's a great solution. So let's just finish off then with uh, a couple of these patches. I just thought it'd be worth including a cheaper one, you know. That's nice. Maybe we can layer that with the, uh, the vocal we have. This is a piano sample. It's a whirly sample, as we can see. A little bit more difficult to uh, navigate and learn. Just trying to find an underlay. That's cool. And these are D50 hits, interesting. What I'll do is I'll just take this MIDI here and bring it down. Let's hear how that sounds. So yeah, quite cool, quite cool quanta actually, isn't it? Um, I think again, it's quite a good representation of how you can see the grains. They've done a good job with the user interface, but that'll uh, that'll wrap us off nicely, so we can recap and not get confused as to what this was all about. So, in essence, I think everyone will have, uh, if you didn't know already, granular is just basically taking little grains of audio, and the, basically the uh, the slice of the audio between one or 100 milliseconds in length and each individual grain will get um, its own envelope and we were looking in pigments how we can change the granular envelope here so we've got quite a few different envelope shapes and then we also had exactly the same thing across all three engines so portal had um, a control somewhere can't quite recall where it was now um and quanta also had its own as well uh, which is here and then the thing that is consistent across all of them was whilst i was designing the patch on the ground up in pigments i was using the randomizer to modulate the sample grain so it would jump between different sections um and uh, a lot of the portal patches were similar so the modulators down here were modulating parts of the grain controls and same thing for quanta um so uh let's um, i'm just going to go through some of the questions now because i did see quite a few uh coming in uh i hope that everyone enjoyed that as well and, and again if you have any questions or feel like you uh, didn't get in in time join the adsr um discord server and myself and lots of other people are always around who um, interact 
Uh, let's have a quick look um, on the chat. Um, a lot of people asking about pigments, I'm noticing. Eki Chikimo. Um, people haven't heard about pigments, which is really surprising. Um, people people liking the sounds, that's great. Um, let's have a look. Um... Yeah, granulator, I've not got experience with, I believe it, isn't it sort of native to Ableton, maybe? Um, yeah, again, more pigments questions. You'll be able to find plenty about that on the ADSR channel. It is probably the most powerful one out of the three in terms of versatility. Uh, Reminds me of Ableton's granulator with more flexibility. Um, <laughs> mm. Yeah, portal. A couple of people saying they have portals, some don't. The UI is really great. What's the other one again? Volcano. Oh, um, the other portal is uh, thermal it's the interactive distortion uh, uh, oh dear it would appear just as this uh, just as things are finishing my camera has decided to die it's one thing <laughs> at least it lasted until the last two minutes um I'm still here, by the way, for anyone watching. Um, I see there's quite a few people on the stream today, actually. We've been hitting uh, 50s and stuff, which is awesome. Um, yeah, um, I've not heard about gran Granalyzer from Morph Morphicky, um Bugman, but um, I'll definitely check that out. Um, people are talking about different different plugins. Just use whatever you can, uh, what, what you have or what you can afford. You don't have to have everything. I was just... Um, I thought it would be good to showcase a couple of different examples um, and um, how do you how do you modify a sample with granular synthesis that fits a note I'm not entirely sure what you mean there um, um, but I think I think you might mean how can you tune it so you could tune it within the engine itself so for example you could tune it within pigments or you could um, you could tune it um beforehand as well um two seconds guys um da, 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 i'm just trying to have a sign off uh, there we go okay this will do rather than not uh <laughs> rather than not finishing um, yeah, so in terms of tuning it, you could do it in something like Pigments itself with the coarse tune on the side, or you could tune it and then bounce it down. For example, I could tune something here using the transpose and the tune, and then I could uh, render it as audio, and then it would be tuned. Um, but you could also use things like Antares Auto-Tune, or you could use um, that Captain Chords thing which detects what key it's in. Or you could use... Um, you could use... Um, Melodyne. Melodyne's probably the most powerful one. So there's quite a selection of tools that you could use. Um, yeah, so I hope that's helped you, Bugman. Um, cool. Um, any other questions, guys? Or you feel like you've not had a chance? Just like I said, there's always room on the Discord, and I'll, I'm happy to swing by in there to um, ch tune them by here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, any other questions? Feel free on the Discord. That's a great place, and uh, I'll swing by and ch uh, every couple of days and have a look if there's any questions. So I hope that you found that um, good. Sorry that we've had to change the camera angle at the end. 
um technology was unpredictable last week but at least it was fine this week <laughs> um so that was really fun look into granular the nitty gritty of granular if you're interested in any of the products here there's links to everything um and if you head over to the adsr uh, website you'll be able to find stuff like pigments um and if you don't know about pigments there's um a lot of content on adsr if you want to go and find out more about it so i hope you found this useful guys um this was really fun apologies about the groggy throat I uh, hope everyone's having a great start to their week and this has been a useful sound design session. Any recommendations for future episodes, please let us know again on that ADSR Discord and I shall see you guys in the next one. Catch you later.